Region 8 News starts right now. Good morning, Region 8. The time now is 630. I think we're all ready to get outside this weekend and enjoy those fireworks. Zach, tell us what we can expect. This weekend, we celebrate our nation's independence and the governor needs your help after the largest single day increase of COVID-19 cases in the state of Arkansas. It was announced yesterday that 878 new active cases were reported. Less than 150 of those came from correctional facilities, and this was almost double the 420 case increase from Wednesday. Currently in the state, there are over 6,000 active cases. 279 people have died. However, 15,600 have recovered. Right now, 272 people are hospitalized with COVID-19, 143 patients are in the ICU, and 71 are on ventilators. Governor Hutchinson also pointed out capacity numbers in neighboring states. Memphis hospitals are at 80% occupancy. 237 current COVID-19 patients are in those beds. And that number is projected to increase in the next two weeks. The Shelby County Health Department director says another building is on standby if the city's hospitals start to overflow. It stands ready to be used um, when needed. Our goal is to um, really get the transmission down so that that facility is not needed. That's always been our goal. The site is meant to be a regional care site and could admit patients from other states. Shelby County has recorded more than 10,700 cases as of yesterday. Voters will be able to cast an absentee ballot in November if they're concerned about COVID-19. Governor Hutchinson said he agreed with Secretary of State John Thurston's interpretation of the law, saying COVID-19 concerns allow for some to vote with an absentee ballot. Both the Democratic and Republican Party chairman agreed with the ruling. To get an absentee ballot, you can call your county clerk's office or go to the Secretary of State's website and download an application. The Secretary of State expects 100 to 150,000 absentee ballots this year. As the November election gets closer, other states are making decisions about mail-in or absentee voting. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled certain requirements in Alabama, like requiring a copy of an ID and witness signatures, are still allowed for the July 14th runoff elections. A lower court recently blocked these requirements amid the coronavirus pandemic. Alabama's attorney general argues the absentee voting requirements prevent fraud. Now to COVID-19 in Missouri. Total cases have nearly reached 22,300 with 1,022 deaths. Hospitalizations have ramped up to over 700 people, but out of the over 441,000 people tested in the state, over 419,000 have tested negative for the virus. Health officials in Dunklin County reported two new cases of COVID-19. According to the Dunklin County Health Department, 104 people there have tested positive for the coronavirus since the outbreak began. Three of those patients have died and 73 have recovered. That means there are 28 active COVID-19 cases in Dunklin County. Numbers from the health department show the most common age range for the patients is 20 to 29. Green County residents, listen up. You'll get to celebrate Independence Day with a big bang. More Media will host its 2020 Paragold Fireworks Show at the Paragold Rotary Softball Park. Pete has set it up where he's the only one getting the bank statement. He's the only one that has access to the account. He's the only one writing checks on it. You know, no checks and balances at all. You just heard from Craighead County Judge Marvin Day on the arrest of former Craighead County Clerk Cade Holliday. Holliday is accused of embezzling over a million dollars in county funds, leading to the county civil lawsuit against the former clerk. The alleged embezzling happened between January 23rd and lasted until June 25th. Now, after eight years of serving in that position, Holiday is now facing multiple theft charges and abuse of office. Judge Day believes Holiday tried to cover his tracks through legislative audits. You know, understanding how legislative audit works, um, you know, you look at it, he purposely started in January because it knows that that won't get audited till this time next year. At least that's my opinion of why he did it. 
Now that everything is coming to light, Judge Day is demanding policy change to establish a more responsible and accountable system. Earlier this week, the law firm representing Holiday released a statement on his behalf saying, quote, he is committed to cooperating with this ongoing investigation. Holiday is set to be back in court next Friday. However, a special quorum court meeting is already set for Monday at 530 to begin discussions about where to go from here. New this morning, many people will be craving barbecue during the holiday weekend, and some will travel to Memphis to their favorite restaurant. But as Kelly Cook explains, restaurants are having to rethink their dine-in services due to the city's mask ordinance. 